A very good evening and welcome everyone. I, Dr. Ritika Dhiman, on behalf of Voice of Healthcare, welcomes all the speakers and the viewers who have joined in for today's discussion on investing in prevention, the value of vaccines for individuals and society. Voice of Healthcare, along with our supporting partner, Pfizer, UN Global Compact in Network India and our hospital partner Apollo Hospitals has taken an initiative to bring together the experts and speakers to recognize World Immunization Week. Today, we will be discussing the importance of adult immunization and how it can help to prevent serious illnesses and complications. Our esteemed panelists will address the challenges of promoting vaccine uptake rates among adults, as well as the misconceptions and bar barriers that prevent access to vaccines. We will also explore the benefits of vaccine in promoting public health and preventing the spread of infectious diseases. We hope that this discussion will provide valuable insight and information about the importance of vaccine in promoting public health. So without further ado, let's get started with the introduction of our esteemed panelists. I welcome Dr. Nimesh Gupta, Chief Vaccine Immunology Laboratory, National Institute of Immunology. Welcome, Dr. Gupta. Dr. Satya Bharata Rothre, Director, Infectious Diseases, PATH. Welcome, Dr. Rothre. Thank you very much. So for starting this discussion, I would like to ask Dr. Satya Bharata, sir, how do vaccine preventable disease impact individuals and society in terms of morbidity, mortality, and economic costs? Thanks for the question, Ritika. Actually, you know, vaccines uh, are the best uh, thing that uh, you can buy for preventing vaccine preventable diseases. It, it comes with an assurance guarantee and some defined uh, efficacy where you have assured protections from a lot of diseases. Individually, you know, it has a huge cost. Uh, the person will suffer the, you know, in this hospitalization, there's out of pocket expenditure, there's work absenteeism, you know, it can lead to morbidity and mortality. As a Society, I would say it's uh, it prevents a lot of outbreak prone diseases like measles, like uh, we just saw the pandemic, COVID uh, infection, it improves herd immunity. It definitely reduces mortality, it stops disease transmission, it helps eliminate and elimination eradication is achievable because of this important tool called vaccines. Otherwise, uh, you, you won't be able to uh, control you know, a lot of diseases. So vaccine has a lot of role to play uh, in reducing individual suffering and uh, you know disease disability mortality as well as you know stop uh, big uh, vaccine preventable diseases there are many examples right thank you so much for answering that so you have rightly mentioned that during the covid uh, pandemic uh, the vaccine and has uh, given a huge support uh, for our ecosystem and public health ecosystem here um, i think there is some network issue with dr nimesh side so i will move on further to you uh, and i'll check uh, with him uh, uh, later on uh, so uh, so so we usually discuss about vaccination for children uh, so what role does vaccine play for an adult individual well children do take the priority as far as you know global vaccination is concerned especially in our country uh, and other low middle middle income countries uh, developing countries to uh, to that matter uh children's are the priority in public government vaccination programs but definitely adults have immunization has a lot of role to play because with development we are living longer we are the life course has improved and we have uh, you know longevity we have uh, we are people living for long because of life expectancy has gone up hugely so during the life course, you have to, you know, a vaccine played an important role in preventing a lot of diseases. And uh, even if you are immunized uh, as a child, uh, it wanes. 
it uh, decreases you need to add a, you know boost up you need to uh, it, uh, all, all the vaccines that we get are, does not or may not prevent lifelong protection so you need boosters you need uh, additional vaccinations during the life course there are many such examples uh, whether it's pneumonia whether it's influenza whether it's hiv hepatitis a or b meningitis you know the list goes on rabies chickenpox there are a lot of uh, vaccines which are available for adults and uh, because life expectancy has gone up the role of adult vaccination to reduce suffering to reduce hospitalization to give protection during your life course is more important now than ever before right thank you so much sir you have uh, to concise what you have said is that it basically improves the quality of life as you go into aging uh, that what i will take from this uh, dr nimesh is back um, so uh, dr nimesh how can we support ongoing research and development of vaccines to address emerging infectious diseases yeah i think i think that's an uh, you know important question and we have been discussing about it uh, quite a time now i think the pandemic has given us some good lesson uh, one of them is that we probably have to have you know a rapid response to any kind of outbreak let it be a kind of regional outbreak or a, or a global outbreak and it's it's you know it's good to understand that we probably need much more sophisticated vaccines as the pathogens are more complicated so i think if we if we look into uh, what we can do about enhancing what we have or expanding from where we started one thing we should appreciate that we have a very good manufacturing capacity right i think of course we still need more manufacturers in the country but we are quite you know at a level of global competence when it comes to the manufacturing within the country something which is missing is uh, the vaccine research part right the early stage the identification of the candidates their real rigorous evaluation in the clinical trials just not merely with one or two immunological parameters but much more you know strength into the the measuring the parameters that can allow us to both select the good you know promising candidate and also pick up that promising candidate and evaluate it rigorously and generate a lot of data which can then further help in not only approving uh, uh, that vaccine but also giving a lot of confidence to the public about that there's a lot of research has been gone that this vaccine came out right i think we have seen a lot of mix of these things when the, this pandemic and that's what i said initially that we learned a lot from this pandemic and i am really happy being at this level of uh, the vaccine on the domain that we are probably going on a right track but of course we need more energy more support and a little bit more networking within the different sectors of the vaccine world thank you so much uh, dr nimesh you have rightly mentioned that this pandemic has taught us a lot uh, we have recognized our um, pain points as well as the positive side of uh, uh, the public health system as well uh, that more research and development is needed in terms of vaccine we have come up with our indigenous vaccines uh, in covid but apart from covid there are other adult vaccinations that need that we need to be you know focused on so very rightly mention, mentioned sir uh, moving on uh, to the challenges and opportunities part of it uh, dr satya barata sir what are the some of the challenges and opportunities in implementing and sustaining immunization programs for adults well uh, you know uh, adult immunization if i see our country is a predominantly private sector uh, business government universal immunization program has not factored in adult immunizations uh, other than the pandemic of course covid uh, uh, was an exception and you need a pandemic to you know get into their adult uh, vaccination drive that was required worldwide uh, if you say challenges may be cost of vaccines uh, which the country needs to prioritize uh, so it prioritizes children over adults right now if there is not a need especially for childhood uh, illnesses and uh, reducing infant mortality and under 5 mortality where the target right now is uh, the other thing is uh, maybe public awareness we we need 
it needs to be educated to know about what are the vaccines available, what vaccines can do, and how it helps adults during the life course, and what are those highly efficacious vaccines available. Maybe that needs to be uh, brought to the limelight. The population needs to be aware that some challenges there. Again, the vaccine delivery system, you know, the public system, health infrastructure uh, dominantly pro that provides healthcare in India, especially for uh, national health programs, is not, uh, other than the COVID vaccination exceptions, it was never designed or never, uh, uh, you know, equipped with uh, infrastructures for a routine delivery of vaccines to adults. That is a challenge, if at all. Uh, so pandemic, I would say, is an exception, but it has uh, cleared the road that uh, the system is there. We, If we want, if there's an intent, if we wish, uh, definitely uh, the system can live up to the expectation of reaching out to the adults with the right kind of access. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Satyabharata, for uh, shedding light on that part, the challenges part of uh, the adult vaccination. And... Um, so moving on uh, to uh, the public health concern, uh, Dr. Nimesh, how can we balance individual autonomy and public health concerns when it comes to vaccination mandates and policies? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, very probably touched upon one of the part that what I believe that mandating a vaccination for an adult population, I don't think that may be be a very easy task, right? Which mandates cannot be really found until unless we have many factors which is actually confirming not only the efficacy of a vaccine, but also giving a lot of other evidence. Okay. So uh, I think how to make it easier, how to really go towards that direction is what we have probably discussed, what Dr. Satyavitra has said. Probably we have to first work upon much more awareness about the vaccine, that how they are really helping for a successful or unhealthy life, unhealthy society. How that can then be taken up towards you know the adult population really you know uh, believing and then you know uh, going and utilizing those vaccination uh, uh, you know uh, uh, policies and then those policies can help. Uh, in designing some of without mandate i mean I, I don't think that we really have to go towards mandatory vaccination for the adult at this particular juncture but if we go step by step by really making a success story of a vaccine which is very important choosing one or two vaccines which has really done great in in past make those success stories then take it up to 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 the public and then make much more you know awareness much more promote uh, about the success of those vaccines and then slowly move I think our country is doing a fantastic job. Uh, I think the level of vaccine hesitancy we have is probably very low as compared to uh, many countries in the western side or the eastern side you know, uh, uh, of the globe. So uh, in my opinion, uh, we probably take a stepwise you know, uh, policies here rather than really focusing on mandating a vaccine for, that, for, the, for this moment. Uh, rightly mentioned, uh, Dr. Nimesh, that we should go step by step uh, in uh, implementing any of the, uh, uh, you know, policies that we have um, for uh, these vaccines. And uh, and touching upon that point, sir, uh, you talked about uh, first awareness should be made in the adult space, right? So what role does policies play in the awareness regarding vaccination among adult population? And what changes are required in these policies for better reach to those individuals, sir? Yeah, I think I think see, particularly we're talking about policies. Policies are upon vaccine implementations. Uh, policies are, of, you know, the vaccination in on about who will take it, who can take it, when to take it, how to take it, right? But if we talk about the awareness part, I think. Uh, there, there are policies from the ministries which actually talked about spreading the awareness. That is, that is probably we should not restrict to the ministry or the health ministry, particularly or the government. I think many of us, the stakeholders in this particular domain, should take that job, right? And we should. It's not it should not be restricted to adults because you know if you make an adult a parent convinced about taking a vaccine for their kid, if you succeed and if they are able to have a hundred. Vaccination done for the childhood. I think you have done 
you know, half of the job because then parents at least are aware about the vaccination. Now then the next step comes in where you have to probably little bit enhance that awareness and promote it towards the adult that how does it will actually, you know, help the adult to take that vaccine, particularly maybe take an example of uh, hepatitis D, right? Not the, probably we don't have a problem with the access to the vaccine, right? We have sufficient availability from variety of manufacturers. But coverage, do we really have a good coverage? I do not think so. We probably have reached a fantastic number, but we can still do better. So I think uh, we probably have to take it up the awareness part, which should be linked to policies or not. I don't think it is really necessary, but I think it is like, like the job of uh, the platforms like you, right? You should take that responsibility to more awareness about the vaccine, not only to that you know particular space of the kids or the children, but also to the adults. Yes, you have rightly mentioned that, you know, uh, it is not just a responsibility of one person or the ministry. Uh, we all have to collaborate. Um, every stakeholder that is present in this space, the healthcare space, uh, be it doctor, be it parents, be it uh, the adult himself and a platform like us. And uh, the government is doing its part, but we all have to do. Uh, you know, each other's uh, role we have to play for this. And uh, Dr. Satya Bharata has talked about uh, the coverage of vaccine, uh, sir. So um, how can we address disparities in vaccine coverage among different socioeconomic groups, accessibility and affordability in, um, uh, you know, underdeserved communities? Well, equity and access are the two important things of any vaccination programs. Uh, like for that matter, we are all experienced in childhood immunization and the universal immunization program that we predominantly do and participate and have all the expertise from. So, um, you know, you have to identify the underserved population. We have to identify the marginalized. You have to build them into your micro planning uh, plan and you have to plan sessions for them. You have to reach those on reach. There are many strategies. The many uh, innovation that has happened to reach those on, you know, underserved community. So disparities among, you know, childhood vaccination is identification of those left outs, those zero doses, those under immunized, those dropouts, and actually, uh, you know, identifying them, mapping them having a special immunization drives or special campaigns. We had Mission Indra Dhanus for that in India. Mm -hmm. And we have other immunization catch-up campaigns, follow-up campaigns uh, to reach those unreached. So we have to uh, identify those, plan the uh, vaccination for them, and reach out with the right kind of vaccines. And that's how you address. That's the lessons learned from the immunization program at large. Yes, you have uh, uh, rightly mentioned that uh, you have to focus on each step that you are taking towards uh, providing accessibility and uh, affordability uh, to the to every uh, you know uh, so, so socioeconomic group, be it under deserved, be it uh, uh, the middle class population or. Uh, any anyone uh, that is included in our society uh, and um, uh, dr nimesh uh, has talked about the collaboration among uh, each stakeholders uh, so how can we collaborate across sectors to promote and improve immunization coverage yeah i, I think you know it's like if you talk about immunization coverage uh, or if you talk about even the vaccine you know development both the ways in our country, what probably we need to promote first is a lot of industry and academia, you know, uh, uh, collaborations. And I think it is doable. You know, we have seen that during the pandemic that uh, when the regulators uh, has raised the bar for the vaccine evaluation in, in a less time frame, you know, a lot of industries have gone to those, you know, academias where there are such platforms were available, like like us uh, in, in NII. And, you know, so starting from the collaboration from that part of clinical trials or development, we can actually utilize the similar network for the coverage. Now, coverage is a little bit much more, you know, difficult task. A country like us, uh, what we have been uh, seen or what we have achieved is fantastic. But we still probably need to promote, you know, uh, you know, like a very small example is like Aganwadis, right? So if you go to a small area, remote areas, if you have 
the Aganwadi Karkatas working together with the clinics and those clinics are working with some of the associations like those who have much more uh, detailed uh, sessions or plans for the vaccine drive. I think such network can actually help promote the vaccine coverage in those remote areas. Otherwise, you know, I think what, what we have in those existing programs, like what Dr. Shatavrata has also mentioned, you know, a lot of endogenous programs, a lot of drive on, you know, dropouts and, you know, probably the far reach vaccination, even in the remote areas. I think that we are doing great, but still, I believe that connecting to the field, uh, to, to, uh, to those Aganwaris or those health, uh, primary health cares in the remote areas with not only the clinic, but also with those associations or those academies those who are actually working about the vaccination drive and awareness with either the scientific or the industry, you know, uh, should connect together. That, that can actually give a lot of support and the strength to that particular, you know, the discussion on vaccine, which will, I believe, will help in increasing the coverage. And then, of course, we have to have a lot of, lot of workers at that area with, who will actually reach to the, those remote areas and really help in, you know, enhancing that coverage. I still, I believe that in, in that area we have, we are really doing great in terms of the innovative things. But maybe you know, it's always good to improve, and I think we have to improve. Rightly explained, uh, Dr. Nimesh, that uh, we have to identify the local people that are present on ground uh, to establish any program for that matter. And uh, Dr. Satyabharata has, uh, uh, you know, talked about uh, the Indra Dhanush program. Uh, uh, mission for vaccination, sir. But uh, what are the current challenges in inclusion of adult immunization under uh, national immunization program or any uh, government funded program? Well, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, choosing vaccines, uh, you know, the country has to pay for it. You know, vaccine comes free in the public uh, uh, health agenda as far as the universal immunization program is concerned. So, and our, our bath cohort is the world's biggest. So we procure vaccines and we actually deliver those vaccines. There's a vaccine cost, there's an operational cost, there's a, you know, uh, cost of uh, maintaining uh, safety and quality also mm -hmm. in terms of maintaining the right cold chain, right supply chain, transportation, delivery. And a lot of monitoring supervision that goes into it, data management. So it's a huge uh, program in terms of adding uh, adult vaccination into it. It, it obviously takes a lot of, uh, uh, we, we have a body called NTAGI, National Technical Immunization Advisory Group, which actually takes such policy decisions at the national level. So one has to come out with uh, the burden, you know, the uh, the cost benefit analysis and you know uh, in fact uh, how much are we uh, uh, controlling diseases or uh, like like for that matter for covid it was a essential requirement we, we had to stop the pandemic and raise the herd immunity so we had to do that so it's sort of up to the integrity the expert group they have to take into evidence all those burdens all those costings and all those requirements of vaccine safety and uh, you know the lot of issues uh, as far as vaccination is concerned so everything has to be considered and the national technical advisory groups should uh, go into the evidence and then take a decision those, those are the way it happens in our country at least Yes, you, you have rightly mentioned uh, uh, regarding the identification of burden that has to be done, um, uh, you know, in case of uh, um, any program, include inclusion of any program for that matter. And uh, we have talked about uh, vaccine. Uh, so it's, it's a topic which, uh, you know, rarely people talk about vaccination. Everything is connected through diseases, uh, a particular disease onset, people are aware, but vaccine is a part which uh, usually doesn't come up. So in COVID, we saw a lot of people talking about vaccinations and, you know, um, getting the herd immunity and everything. But it was uh, the topic before COVID that was very much less uh, uh, talked about. So for that uh, dr nimesh uh, so how can we address uh, this vaccine hesitancy among adults are you able to hear me sir 
Hello. Dr. Nimesh, are you able to hear me? I think there is some network issue. Uh, yes. So uh, we talked about uh, vaccine. Um, you know, I so same question goes for you, sir. So how can we address this vaccine hesitancy among adults? So, you know, hesitancy or reluctancy or vaccine shyness is a uh, it's a urbanized Western phenomena more. And, you know, uh, there are a lot of, uh, uh, I would say, uh, social awareness uh, that needs to get into the, the you know, it, it's a communication challenge. It's basically making people aware of, uh, of vaccines and its benefit and its maybe uh, the side effects or uh, the adverse effects following immunization, which you know, the reasons people are afraid to take vaccine is lack of awareness or uh, the side effects or the harmful uh, effects they think uh, some adverse effects of, uh, you know, having simple things like fever or abscess or any other side effect that they are scared of. So we have to make the community aware uh, of the benefits of the safety and the efficacy and the then you know cost benefit of it so that's how you have to educate the population to accept and it's right now it's a it's more in the private sector adult immunization or vaccination is a completely private phenomena so uh, individuals have their choices to go to their doctor and ask for the vaccines Rightly mentioned, uh, sir. So same question goes to Dr. Nimesh, sir. Uh, how can we address vaccine yeah. hesitancy among adults? What's your opinion on this? Yeah, I, I think we uh, uh, a little bit discussed about... Uh, can, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I'm able to hear you, sir. Can, can you? Yeah, okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I think there is a lot of voice break in between, so people are not able to hear it, but it's fine. So, about vaccine hesitancy, as we you know, discussed that you know something which needs to be done. Of course, you know, the awareness part is important. That you know we have to promote the vaccine awareness. And a country like us uh, with such population, uh, such diversity, we have been doing well. Uh, the second thing in in that part on the vaccine hesitancy, maybe you know a lot of research which has been done uh, has to be highlighted and. The clinical trials which we are doing, uh, you know, two things. One, we probably or the regulatory bodies may have to think about raising the bar on, you know, the evaluation criteria, right? So maybe if, if we have some limited criteria right now, we probably to enhance them with much more understanding on on the vaccine trials, the vaccine immunology, and and, and the human immunology. And that particular part has to go towards a data sharing. You know, somewhere we have to find that how we can enhance not only the, the, the rigorous way of doing a vaccine evaluation, but also sharing that rigorous evaluation among, you know, a wide public. And then utilize that resource and take it up towards promoting the awareness towards the public, whether it's, a, you know, a naive public, a layman public. And uh, those who really do not have much understanding about the vaccines, I think with that strength of when you come out with saying that a lot of work, research, and you know a lot of you know uh, uh, innovation has been done behind a particular vaccine, that will give a lot of confidence to public about using the vaccine. We know, I think, even everyone in this country is very much aware that vaccine helps. It, it saves your life. It, it helps in giving you a healthy life. But still, you know, we always, and it's good to, to have a, a lot of, a, you know, a kind of uh, arguments or the debates. And that's where this, you know, much more strength of research and data will probably help in those debates to probably take it up uh, and, and reduce this particular hesitancy, even if we have a fraction of individuals in the country, those who are a bit hesitant about the vaccine. Right, you have rightly mentioned that you know every uh, logic precedes everything. So you have to think logically. You have to give them facts and data regarding that. And you discussed about clinical trials, sir. 
<clears throat> a lot of clinical trials that happens in India, people are not aware of those trials that they are happening. You know, people don't have access to those clinical trials as well. So is there a group or uh, what is your opinion on that regarding the vaccination? Is, is the question to me? Yes, sir. So I'll ask this question yeah, to Dr. So there, 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 was a, yeah, there was a break in voice. So I don't know. I just didn't hear that question very clearly. So I, I talked about uh, the clinical trials that happen uh, for vaccinations in India. Uh, people don't have access to that. That's why there is a kind of less awareness among people regarding the adult vaccination space. So, so what is your opinion on that? Yeah, I think I think we have, you know, uh, particularly let's say when there is a regulatory body or any authority in, in the government when they after a vaccine approval, we put in the the discussions and the information on the public domain. What I will, you know, uh, suggest in the future is we probably think about having more parameters for vaccine evaluation. Let's say an example. An X vaccine is evaluated on the basis of its capacity in inducing antibodies, right? So we see zero surveillance and we do a kind of lot of serological analysis and we say there is zero conversion, right? I think with that zero conversion part, we probably have to now increase the parameters on the cellular responses. I think many of us have heard about T cells and B cells during this pandemic. And those parameters has to be measured in such a way that they can be a measurable parameter in case of a clinical trial, either a phase three trial or an immunobridging trial. Now, if we if we reach to that level where we raise the bar for the evaluation criteria, those information can further accommodate along with the information that we are providing on the initial trial of the vaccine, like a just a zero conversion. That actually will enhance the not only the strength of the discussion on a particular vaccine for its clearance but it will also give the strength as i said towards the vaccine acceptance the vaccine acceptability because i think everyone whether you talk about vaccine or you talk about any other medical intervention if you have a lot of you know a, a background behind that particular molecule or a candidate in terms of research and innovation I think that always have a better space than you know the others. So I think there are groups, there are teams. You know, uh, an example is you know the immunobridging bridging trials that has been done in our laboratory at the institute. We were able to provide you know much more additional or advanced immunological parameters in terms of the mucosal and the systemic immunity, and that has helped you know, as an immunobridging trial in a in a scenario where a vaccine efficacy trial was not feasible. So it's. It's, it's not like that we don't have the capacity. I think we have the capacity in the country now. We have the platforms. Now it's the time to utilize the blueprint of these platforms and propagate them in the country so that we just do not have limitations with one or two platforms available in the country for doing that advanced you know, research or the evaluation. And connect them with the upcoming vaccine platform where we can have multiple approaches. I think we should take the advantage of the past few years where we were able to promote the awareness in the public about, you know, many of us, many of our colleagues who are not in this background, they know RNA vaccines, they know DNA vaccines, right? They do know vector vaccine and the subunit vaccine. I think this is the time we should take the advantage and put interest into that area where we can then promote further, you know, it, it's like, it's like you need to probably propagate the infrastructure because we have the capacity, the infrastructure propagation will help in further capacity building. And connect that infrastructure with the industries, health agencies, and the academia in such a way that we can then take up the call together, not only on the research and development, but also on the innovation, the risk-taking innovation that we should do. I think that's how we should see the future outbreak, the future pandemic, and how we can really respond to emergency, in emergencies and very quickly if we have that network and if we have that business. Right. You have very rightly mentioned, Dr. Nimesh, you have very uh, elaborated uh, the way it should work. Uh, so uh, I would like to ask the same question uh, to Dr. Satya Bharata as well. So what is your opinion on the, the clinical trials in the adult immunization space uh, and access to those trials in India? 
well uh, you know clinical trial is a scientific uh, research uh, study so it's basically it's a very rigorous scientific method uh, used in the community to prove uh, safety and efficacy in real life scenario in among the masses so when it comes to dissemination of such findings if we have at all uh, very high efficacy high safety and vaccine is quite uh, uh, good vaccine if we have a good vaccine you know the common man will not read uh, those uh, scientific papers or go into the journals you have to make it uh, simpler easier and maybe the mass media can play a role here like uh, reaching out to the community that here is a vaccine that has been tested in indian population which is quite uh, safe and efficacious and it has a lot of benefits no harm effects it's a great vaccine it has to uh, that's how the awareness has to be uh, raised among the indian population if at all we are talking about adult vaccination or whatever we uh, we have uh, so it it has to be the papers it has to be the radios it has to be TV, it has to you know you know you know scientists can come on tv and have this kind of panel discussions to disseminate such information to the masses right uh, you have very rightly mentioned the role of mass media in this that uh, uh, you have to spread the word uh, in masses uh, through the media that are present um, here and uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, with this uh, i it just uh, you know clip click to me that what uh, regarding the myths uh, that we have in this vaccine space uh, during covid also there were a lot of myths uh, uh, regarding the vaccines that people were scared to take off uh, take uh, those vaccines so how can we uh, this question is to both of you so how can we overcome those myths um, around the vaccines that are there in um, this space well myths can be you know you you again have to have a study to find out what exactly are the myths uh, floating around uh, uh, going by our common experiences during monitoring supervision or being associated with the immunization programs you know myths can be like uh, having uh, it doesn't work or myth can be there'll be some harmful effects myth can be you know this uh, certain communities may not like uh, um, you know if va vaccine is cultured in a particular media or uh, you know uh, and culture so it can be maybe not acceptable to certain communities uh, uh, so these are the myths uh, i would say we'll have to find out what are the myths circulating among uh, it needs a methodic way to go out reach out to the community find out what's a myth and then customize your uh, awareness campaign or communication uh, tools accordingly to address those issues it can be anything having fever having abscess having you know you know vaccines even can you know there are certain deaths which are coincidence happening so it goes out in the rumor across uh, uh, there can be anaphylaxis there can be so many other things that can be adverse events following immunization which uh, can be misinterpreted otherwise uh, so i would say find out what's the myth and then address it with facts that yeah. uh, with data and facts and logical reasoning that <clears throat> is facts Right, so I think there is some uh, with the uh, Dr. Nimesh sir. So with this, um, I would like to conclude the session. So uh, before concluding the session, I would like to uh, you know um, ask you um, um, if you can say a message. What will be your message, uh, uh, you know, to our audience uh, for this World Immunization Week? Well, vaccines are the best thing that has ever happened in public health. Uh, no other preventive measure has the assurance or the guarantee of protecting you. Vaccines uh, are in the top of the line, the best of the best specific preventive measures that we have at hand. So believe in vaccines and go for immunization. That should be the message, uh, whatever Thank your age. You. 
<laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Satyabharat. I will uh, wait for 10 seconds uh, more for Dr. Nimesh to come. Um, and then uh, if he doesn't, then I will like to conclude this session here. It was a very, uh, you know, uh, important discussion that we had today. Uh, so this is this discussion has been uh, very informative and provided so many valuable insight in the adult immunization yeah. space. So thank you so much, uh, uh, you know, for um, taking time for this panel discussion here. So I think, uh, yeah, so he'll not be joining now. Yes, we can conclude the session here now. Thank, thank you so you much. Uh, thank you so much for taking time. It was a pleasure interacting with you on vaccines. Yes, same here, sir. Same here.